Okay, great. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. This is the uh, February 16th, 2021 meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the director of the Department of Public Works. I'm also the chair of this commission. Um, we'll start by uh, uh, announcing that this meeting is being audio and video recorded. And um, I will now ask Beth to take the role, please. Go ahead, Beth. Hey, Donna. Here. Jody? Here. Jamie? Here. Devin? Here. Wayne? Nancy? Here. Karen? Here. Gary? Jim? Here. And Adam? So I am showing, I did not hear anything from Adam, Gary, or Wayne. Are you here? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Beth. Okay, next on our agenda is public comment. Uh, this is for any member of the public who is present who wishes to speak to the commission on any topic at all. Um, what I will say is that uh, some of you may be here um, a, about the reconstruction uh, project that we're planning on Pine Street. Um, if you are here for that reason, I would ask that you just hold your comments until we reach um, the part where I give an overview of uh, what we're planning on Pine Street and there will be a time for, for all of you to comment um, in, in that section of the agenda. Um, it'll just help the meeting to flow a little bit better. Um, but in the meantime, if there are others here who have a comment for, for this commission on another topic or any topic, um, you are welcome to raise your hand and we will recognize you. We just ask that you state your name and address for the record and, and then you're welcome to comment. Is there anyone who has any comment on uh, anything for the commission? Okay, I don't see any virtual or other hands. So um, we will assume that there is no comment and move along. Donna, um, Donna sorry to interrupt. I see, I see a, um, a hand up just as you were moving on. Yeah, I do oh, as well. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I see a hand. Okay. All right, go ahead. You should I be think unmuted. that's Nancy. That's okay. I'm gonna put my hand back down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, Nancy had called in. Okay. I'm, I'm having um, connection issues here. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, any other hands, virtual or otherwise? Okay, seeing and hearing none, um, we'll go to reports from departments and subcommittees. Um, since Wayne is not here, I will offer a few updates from the DPW. Um, we are. Excuse me, Donna. Did um, you? I think you've skipped the approval of the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Thank you, Beth. I appreciate it. Um, next is approval of minutes from the previous meeting, which is January nineteenth, twenty twenty one. May I have a motion for approval, please? Have been moved to approve. Jody, I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion about approval of the minutes from? January 19th, 2021. Okay, hearing none. May I have a roll call please, Beth? Donna, <clears throat> excuse me, Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Uh, yes. Devin? Yes. Uh, Wayne's still not here. Uh, Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Gary's still not here. Uh, Jim? Yes. And Adam is still not here. Okay. That is unanimously. Okay, Beth, thank you. And thank you for getting me back on track with the agenda here. I was um, excited to give uh, DPW updates on what we're planning for the coming construction season. Um, we will be reconstructing Atwood Drive. 
um, that is uh, uh, resurfacing the roadway as well as water main improvements. Um, so for those of you who travel down Atwood Drive, this may be welcome news. The pavement is in very poor condition. Um, this is roughly a half a million dollar project. So significant utility work involved here, but um, this, this project is currently out to bid and uh, we expect completion by the end of this construction season. Uh, we're also pleased to announce that we have had, we have been working with a group of senior engineering students from Smith College to develop a complete streets conceptual design for South Street from School Street to South Park Terrace. Um, they, what we are trying to do is take South Street which is very wide, a lot of uh, blacktop there. And we are trying to incorporate um, more pedestrian friendly um, sort of uh, design elements into any reconstruction that we are going to do on this roadway. The, the pavement condition is obviously poor. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that we are, are looking at this in a very holistic way so that when we do reconstruct the street, um, it, it will be more uh, pedestrian and bike friendly as, as well as um, carry the, the significant traffic that it carries. So next steps um, will be that, that we will likely engage in an outside uh, design firm to sort of review um, what has been um, worked on by DPW and Smith College. And then we will sort of move this project towards um, ultimate construction, but we are a little bit ways off on this and, and that process will be communicated as we get closer. But I just wanted to uh, make the commission aware that, that this is very much on our radar and, and that we've been looking carefully um, at this roadway as, as part of our future paving plans. Um, and then I'll also mention that there are uh, two mass DOT projects, um, the exit 19 roundabout, which is nearly complete at this point in Damon Road um, reconstruction, which is going to be ramping up um, in a more significant way as, as the weather breaks for us. Um, so that will be ongoing uh, throughout this construction season. So those are DPW's updates. I don't know if anyone else has any comments for the commission, any other departments or any other members of the commission. Any news? Councilor Nash, go ahead. Thank you, Director. Um, so I would just like to extend a thank you to yourself, the mayor, and to the plant manager at Coca-Cola for meeting last week. Uh, we are moving in the direction of, of doing a traffic study to, uh, to look at the, the lost truck problem. And I really appreciate um, you pulling that, to helping to pull that together. And uh, it looks like uh, this, this is moving in a positive direction. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Does anybody else, any other commission members have any updates? Okay, hearing none. Um, next, we will move on to matters before the commission. Um, so the first item is an overview of proposed safety improvements to Maple Street, Pine Street, and the Man Terrace intersection. Um, so what I will do uh, for this agenda item is I will give a, a brief overview of, of DPW's proposed project here. Um, then I will ask the chief of police to say a few words about this intersection um, and, and why um, we've sort of been driven to, to do what we're doing. And then I will do it, what I will do is I will open this up to public comment for, for any members of the public who are here who, who wish to uh, ask a question or, or have a comment on, on this project. And then what we have later on in the agenda are a, a package of ordinances which we will take individually um, that will be needed um, for ultimate approval by this commission as well as ultimate approval by city council in order to move the project forward. So that's kind of how the rest of the meeting will go. So with that, um, I will start with, with an overview of this project and kind of why we're doing what we're doing. 
Um, so the intersection of Pine Street, Maple Street, and Man Terrace has long been a, a place for uh, accidents and, and many near misses. And again, the chief will speak to this a little bit more. Um, but part of what DPW does is when we analyze the streets that are in need of paving, um, we also look at safety improvements that we can enact in the neighborhood as part of the paving project. Um, so Pine Street is in need of reconstruction. Um, and we thought that this was an excellent opportunity to marry that reconstruction with an intersection study that had been completed for us by the design firm Fuss and O'Neill. And what we did was we engaged Fuss and O'Neill to study several problematic intersections around the city. This was one of them. And then to offer us potential remedies for how we could make the intersection safer. So the overview of this project um, is that we will be repaving Pine Street, the limits of work. Um, it's, it's about a 1900 foot long project. Um, the project will stretch from roughly that intersection, that five way intersection that I referenced uh, all the way back to South Main Street. So that's roughly 1900 feet. Um, we will be uh, upgrading the sidewalks um, that, are, that are already in place on Pine Street. They're bituminous sidewalks. Um, the, many of them are non-compliant. There's a lot of pinch points. Um, some of the sidewalks that are in place actually don't make a lot of sense. So it, we've done a thorough analysis of, of the sidewalk and, and all of them will be reconstructed so that they're ADA compliant. Um, and um, when we sort of head towards that, uh, the intersection of uh, Pine, Maple, and Man Terrace, that's where the uh, bulk of the safety improvements um, will be implemented. And what we are recommending there and what is before this commission this afternoon is to make a four-way intersection or to make a four-way stop at this intersection. So stop signs uh, on both sides of Pine Street and on both sides of Maple. And then Man Terrace um, will become a one-way exit only onto Pine Street with the mouth of the intersection um, sort of reconfigured with Pine Street so that it is, there is some separation off of that four-way intersection. Um, and I'm sort of uh, describing what Maggie is sharing on her screen here, but I think the, the picture um, probably explains things better than I am. Um, you know, we reviewed options for this intersection very thoroughly, and we had Fuss and O'Neill review options for this intersection very thoroughly. Um, they gave us sort of a, a list of alternatives um, that we review and we determine, you know, is this uh, what we want to implement? Um, you know, one of the things that, that they suggested was the possibility of a cul-de-sac here. One of the things that they suggested was the possibility of a roundabout here. So what we want to do when we are looking at a, a, an alternatives analysis is we want to do something that is going to be impactful, that is going to improve conditions, um, but that is not going to be terribly disruptive to people. And, and that's how we ensure sort of the, the best possible outcome. So the conceptual plan that you see on the screen in front of you is the ultimate design that DPW has chosen to advance. Um, we sent a, a letter um, from me as well as this conceptual design and uh, the engineers, uh, the department's engineers actually leafleted um, uh, residences along Pine Street, Man Terrace, um, some sections of Maple, um, last week to notify them of this meeting. I've been in touch with both counselors, Jared and Maori, um, so that they could sort of send this um, as they saw fit to their constituents. Um, so it, we have tried to publicize what we're doing. We've certainly uh, heard from some people on Pine Street, some people on Man Terrace, um, and, and I expect there to be some comment now. So um, that's kind of a brief overview of how we got where we are and what we're proposing. Um, I will turn this over to Chief Casper now to just talk a little bit about this intersection and why we feel it's so important to implement safety changes here, Chief. Thank you. Yeah, I think this initially, I brought this before the committee perhaps in February or March of 2018. 
Um, and thank you, Director Lascalia, for having Fuss and O'Neill take a look at it and for the recommendations here. Um, the reason that uh, it was originally brought forward is just there are a lot of collisions there. I mean, at the end of the day, this is one of the intersections in the city that stands out to us because our officers respond to a lot of collisions. So I have the collision data in front of me and I am thankful to folks in our records bureau who this morning just did the last few years so we could have the most up-to-date information. So on, on average over the last five years, we average 8.6 collisions at this intersection on an annual basis. Um, the last few years, it's been nine uh, in 2018, 19, and 20. And some of those involve uh, personal injury. Certainly they all involve property damage. So it's a, a significant number of accidents there. Unique to these accidents is that they all occur during the daytime. Some areas of our city where there's accidents, um, lighting may be an issue or perhaps impaired operation. That's not the case at this intersection. These all occur uh, between seven in the morning and seven at night. Actually, 100% of the collisions that we looked at um, occur during that time period. So this is definitely regular commuter traffic moving through the intersection. Um, Almost all, 96% of the accidents involved a car that was on Pine Street colliding with a car that was on Maple Street. So we didn't have any rear end accidents or anything like that. This was very clearly some sort of intersection problem or people having trouble navigating the intersection. We did break it down further and just noted that 23% uh, of the drivers on Pine Street just failed to stop at the stop sign, didn't see it uh, for whatever reason and went through it. And 23% of the drivers on Pine stopped, uh, but thought it was a four-way and just pulled out in front of, of other traffic. So that's a significant amount of what was causing these accidents. That's almost 50% caused just by, uh, by that driver action. Um, snow banks impacted a couple, uh, which was also notable. So uh, that's why I brought this before the commission. I think this is an intersection where, you know, these are the ones that are documented. I definitely know that um, there's a lot of near misses there as well. So the police department definitely is recommending having changes to this intersection and we know that it will improve uh, safety. Uh, that's everything that I have on this intersection. Okay, thank you, Chief. Um, so with that, I, I think the best thing to do is I will now open this up to any members of the public who are here who wish to comment on uh, what they may have received from us as a leaflet or via email, um, any comments at all on, on this project, um, we are more than happy to listen. So please uh, raise your hand and we will recognize you. I just need your name and address for the record, please. Okay, I see Marcy. Hi, Marcy Linker here. Um, I uh, did contact Rachel. Um, we had this sort of concerted effort between a few of us to correct, uh, contact Alex and Rachel since it's in both Ward 4, 5, and 7. Um, so Rachel was very responsive and sent me this. I didn't see on the plan ahead, so I had emailed Donna because I'm in favor of this, this change. As someone who goes through this intersection very regularly and for over 20 years has lived on either side of this intersection. I've had, I'm one of those people that's had a lot of near, near misses. Um, fortunately, no accident, but I have, I was advocating for those stop ahead signs that were further away. And I, I could see a benefit to putting them on Pine Street as well. Um, I know that uh, more recently, a, uh, a warning went up on those signs that I, is so barely readable that says, this is not a four way stop which of course will change. But um, most of my near misses have been people just going blatantly go through, going through on the Pine Street um, direction, either way, east, west, not stopping or just pulling out. So anyway, I just would advocate for adding this stop ahead signs further um, down on both directions on Pine Street as well. Okay, thank you for your comment. Thank you. Excuse me, um, Marcy, can you give me your address, please? Oh, yeah, 107 Black Birch Trail. In Thank Florida. you. Florence. Uh, Bob Gardner is next, Donna. Okay, Bob, go ahead. You just have to unmute you. Hold on just a moment. We just have, you have to, to unmute, unmute you. I asked you to. Now, did it work? 
Okay, hi. It's actually uh, Mary Albert um, at uh, 24 Pine Street. And I'm also uh, very much in support of the four-way stop. Um, however, I can't help but um, really know that a lot of the factors for the increase of uh, accidents is because Pine Street is uh, uh, such a thoroughfare for speeding. And, you know, I and some other neighbors have been aware of this for a number of years. I've, we've been here for at least 34, going on 35 years, and often brought it up um, that it's just so uh, dangerous. Um, there's lots of, um, you know, elders, uh, families, children, and people are speeding and perhaps they don't see the stop sign because they're going so fast um, and not paying attention. So I really urge some other uh, speed calming um, bumps or some kind of gradual increases to make people go slower down the street in conjunction because I wonder if it'll be as successful if we don't address the speed issue. Okay, thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Okay, next, um, I don't see any virtual hands, but I see an actual huh? hand. Uh, Ann Wassel. Hold on a moment. We just have to unmute you, Ann. You, you should get a notice. There we go. Hi. Um, yes, my name is Ann Wassel, and this is my husband, Jody Domenico. We live at 32 Pine Street in Florence. Um, and we've been here 37 years on Pine Street. Um, I think we're, we also are in support of the changes that are man, uh, at Man Terrace and the intersection of uh, Pine and Maple. One thing that I would like to, to um, mention about that intersection though, is that I find the sight line very difficult when I am going, um, uh, is it west on Pine Street down yep. towards the Arts and Industry Building? When I get to the intersection of pine and maple, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to see to the left. I think there's maybe an electrical box, and some kind fence. of a utility box. And there's an also a new fence. Oh, the new fence. And then in the winter, when the snow is plowed with the snow bank there, um, I have to pull out uh, what to, feels like an unsafe distance into the intersection in order to, be see, to see down that hill. Um, I don't have a four by four, I have a, a, a sedan, so I'm not up real high, but I don't know if there's anything that can be done to address that sight line there. Um, the other thing that I would like to comment on to sort of support um, Mary um, Albert's comments also is that Pine Street has become um, uh, a much, much busier street in all the years since we first lived here. And it, a lot of people use it as a bypass from Main Street. Um, it's a long street. And so the speed on it is uh, really significant. And we have had uh, construction crews at times that have been doing work on Pine Street even say to us, wow, they really, they really breeze through here, don't they? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they do. Um, and we've met numerous times in the past with our past um, ward representative and um, with different city officials. And in fact, there was a traffic study done at one point that we were told actually ended up getting lost and never followed up on. So anyway, we're concerned now that Pine Street's going to be paved that the speed may become even more of an issue as the, we don't have our, um, you know, more of a even surface on it. So we would really like to see some kind of speed reduction incorporated into this project now. Um, we, I'm saying we, I mean many people in the neighborhood because um, we have had neighborhood be meetings before have made a couple of re recommendations. Um, one is um, maybe uh, doing uh, some sort of speed bump. Um, maybe making the end of Pine Street from Chestnut down to South Main Street one way. Um, it's a really small, it's a narrow end of the street. And so it's a continuous problem with traffic. 
Um, we've been told in the past in order to try to decrease speed for us to park on the street at that end of the street, but it's dangerous. We've all lost many side view mirrors from, from uh, parking on the street. And irate drivers. And irate drivers, yes. So um, now that Pine Street is going to have such a big uh, renovation to it, um, we just really would like somebody to finally hear us and really take into consideration um, our concerns about this. Um, and just one last thing I wanna say, I'm really happy to hear about the sidewalks because again, the sidewalks, especially from Chestnut Street down to South Main Street, there's a lot of lumps and bumps and cracks and um, it's very difficult to walk on them and especially at night um, because they're so uneven. So glad to hear that the sidewalks will be addressed. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. And, and what I will do again, just to kind of assist with the flow of the meeting is I, I, I will give everybody an opportunity to comment. I'm, I'm taking notes and, and I will have a, a response for many of these comments. So thank you. Um, next is Mara. Mara, we're going to unmute you here. Okay, it's, it's my husband, Michael. So we got the trifecta going here. Uh, Anne is our neighbor to the left and uh, Mary is our neighbor to the right. Uh, so uh, we're on 28 Pine Street. So yeah, to underscore their sense of this being a speedway and uh, you know, speed bumps being critical. Uh, I think what Anne said is that the potholes were some deterrent. So uh, maybe we wanna keep those, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but uh, I think if they're absent, you know, it will be a faster driving street. So the ideas of speed bumps, I think, are critical. Uh, the sidewalks, are they going to do them in uh, cement or tar? Do we know that? Um, it, yes, they're not going to be concrete. So bituminous is asphalt. So they, they will be, um, they will be uh, asphalt sidewalks. Well, it's good to hear that there'll be some new sidewalks. I, I think if you used a wheelchair, it would be kind of pretty impossible to pass them, uh, or really difficult now. So to put a pitch in for accessibility, uh, and certainly we're glad to see the street get attention and sidewalks to be addressed. So uh, great news. Okay, thank you for your comments. I appreciate yeah. it. Excuse me, Maura and... Um... Michael, what's your last name, please? Oh, hold on, we're, we're gonna have to unmute you again. Hold on just a moment. You're muted, press Alt A. Okay. Can you go hear ahead. us? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Michael, we can hear you. So it's Michael Romanovich, R-O-M-A-N-O-V-I-T-C-H. Great. And, yeah, they got me. And Maura Plant. P-L-A-N-T-E? Correct. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Next is Dennis. I see your actual hand up. Uh, hold on, we're gonna unmute you. Dennis, go ahead. Okay, hi. Um, I live at 50 Middle Street. Um, I, I have a part-time gig where I drive uh, making local deliveries in Northampton and surrounding towns. Uh, a couple of days a week. So I'm well familiar with almost every intersection in the area. Um, and I want to talk about a couple of things in, in regard to this one, the four way stop signs and an alternative plan. Um, my experience is that four way stop signs generally don't work. Uh, they're primarily designed for people who don't know how to drive and, and they create more problems than they solve. Uh, the problems in, include um, people who are at the stop sign and don't observe the order of, of occurrence that determines who gets to go next. Some people unnecessarily hesitate when it's their turn, uh, leads to frustration and maybe dangerous proceeding by other drivers. Uh, some drivers go before it's their turn, which risks a collision with those who are correctly observing the, the, the proper order. Um, and then there are the unobservant drivers who uh, Chief Casper mentioned who think that every four-way intersection has four-way stop signs. Uh, most don't. Um, similar intersections like this one, I, I see people when I have the right-of-way who are gen 
genuinely surprised when I don't stop and some are already pulling out when they don't have the right of way. Now, granted, they're, they're poor drivers, but they learn this behavior because of four way stop signs. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough with the other changes, but not the four way stop signs. And also, cars who, who are stopped going north on Maple Street are going to have trouble when it's snowing out, when it's a, a, a slippery road. They're not going to be able to, to start up again in some cases. If you have cars behind them who have better traction, they may try to go around them. And now they're entering the, the intersection on the left-hand side of the, the, their road. It's going to be a nightmare. Um, so given all of that, I've got another solution to propose. Uh, you may remember on Florence Road and Rocky Hill Road, where there is now a traffic light. Um, before that was put in, we tried putting in large stop signs on both sides of Florence Road, uh, bigger than normal stop signs, and they're on both, both sides. It didn't work there in, in, in the long run, but the Maple Street, Pine Street intersection is a smaller and slower speed one. I think large stop signs on both sides will certainly attain the, the goal of getting the attention of Pine Street drivers and having them stop there. Um, there are small signs here now that warn that crossing traffic does not stop. These need to be bigger on both sides of the road, just below the, the stop signs. Um, I think this is a much less drastic solution and doesn't add any of the problems that a four-way stop sign adds. Okay, thank you for your comments, Dennis. Dennis, I need your last name too, please. You'll have to unmute. Yeah, hold on. We're going to unmute you. Yeah, the last name is Desmond, D E S M O N D. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is it says iPhone Jeffrey. So we'll unmute you. Okay, go ahead. Um, we are not able to hear you. So this is iPhone Jeffrey, your showing is unmuted, um, but we can't hear you. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, a setting um, that on your phone maybe that you have to hit. And if so, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that number combination might be. All right, I think what we'll do is um, for iPhone Jeffrey, um, if you're able to unmute yourself, um, maybe you can try again, but in the meantime, we'll, uh, we will move on to uh, the next person whose hand is up here. And that would be Elena. Hi, um, I, my name is Elena Hoosman and I live at 19 Man Terrace. Um, thanks so much for holding this meeting and having public comment. Um, a couple of things uh, I wanted to add to the public comment. Um, one, just absolutely in favor um, towards any sort of solution for this particular intersection, given the challenges that many others have already raised. Um, I'd also like to echo the need for any sort of traffic calming mechanisms on Pine Street, um, you know, whether that's speed bumps or elevated crosswalks, um, narrowing of the travel lanes, um, you know, Pine Street is a quite, in most sections, is pretty wide of a street. So I wonder if there's opportunities to include bike lanes, protected bike lanes, um, really make this project um, some sort of complete streets, um, you know, exemplar um, ex within Florence. Um, so those are just some ideas around what traffic calming mechanisms could be. Um, a question I had was whether or not there was a street mix design available for Pine Street, um, just so that the public could see um, 
what the dimensions are of the travel lanes versus parking lanes versus sidewalks. I'd be curious to know how wide the sidewalks are and how wide the travel lanes are. Um, and then in terms of Man Terrace itself, I was, you had mentioned Donna um, at the beginning of the meeting that uh, a cul-de-sac and a roundabout were part of the um, considerations for the intersection. And I'm just curious why those were not um, brought forward um, and kind of what the pros and cons were behind them. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your comments. Um, okay, I'm just trying to see what else we've got. I, Anne, I see your actual hand up. Um, so we will unmute you. Cindy, are you able to see Anne? Yeah, and I'm asking her to unmute. Okay. So, and you, you should be getting a message, then you'll have to press something, control something. There you go. All right. Uh, this is Jeffrey Bott. I couldn't get my phone to work, so I came next door. Um, but I, I just wanted to support the changes to um, Maple Street, Pine Street but really reiterate that speed is definitely a factor on our street. Um, and there's also an issue with the intersection of Pine and Chestnut Street, which is right across from our house. People do not make that turn. They cut into the oncoming traffic lane when they make the turn off of Pine Street onto Chestnut, which is the general flow of the traffic because they're coming off of Pine they're going over to Route 9 in the center of Florence to continue down Route 9. And it, it has always been a dangerous curve because I've seen people you know, be in the opposite lane as they go around the corner. And um, they're not going slow because there's no stop sign. There's no nothing. They just swing around the corner and continue. So I think in terms of rebuilding the street, repaving the street, and doing the work that you're doing, that's an issue that has to be addressed as well. There's a stop sign on Chestnut Street as you come off it. There never used to be, and people wouldn't stop there either. And there were a lot of accidents in the past. Um, but traffic has gotten a lot denser over the years. Uh, we've been here 35 years, and um, it's not slowing down. So um, I just wanted to say that along with the other work that you're doing. I think the, the whole speed issue and the rest of Pine Street need to be addressed. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Beth, uh, I don't believe we have your address, it's, however. It's Pine or 30 True left, it's a two family house. So it's Jeffrey Bott and I'm on the left-hand side. 32 Pine? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marcy, I see your hand raised. I just raised it because Christine LaBelle is having trouble and she then wrote it in the chat but wasn't seen. So I was raising my hand for her. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. Okay, let me uh, go to the chat here. Thank you, Marcy. I don't know what's going on. I've had Zoom meetings all year, like the rest of you, perhaps. I know how the reactions work, but my hand's not showing up. So my apologies. Um, just a few questions. I'm, my name is Christine LaBelle, and I'm at 47 Pine Street. Um, I definitely uh, agree with the concept that that intersection needs improvement. Um, I wanted to reiterate a couple of the comments about the sight lines there being very difficult right now, coming from Pine heading towards the Arts and Industry Building. Hard to see to the left on that um, as you're coming west. So I just wanted to reaffirm those comments from prior. Um, uh, I had a similar question as another um, uh, participant about why the other choices were not chosen. I don't know if that can be answered here today, uh, but a cul-de-sac or a round roundabout, because I do have some concerns that the four-way stop may not actually um, work well um, at that intersection. Um, but I'd be interested in hearing about that. Like where to go? 
And then um, I also had a question about, and this may not have been decided yet, about whether traffic will be kept open through that intersection, like one lane while the construction is being done, or whether it is planned to be closed um, through the, the um, construction period. Um, and I also just wanted to put on the record that I, the side, these sidewalks are clearly in need of upgrades. So I'm glad to hear that. And I'm supportive of that um, development as well. Thank you very much for the chance to speak. Okay, Cass, thank you for your comment. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, thank you for your comment. Um, looking for other hands and I see uh, Councillor Jarrett. We'll unmute you in a moment here. Hi everyone, yeah, Alex Jarrett, City Council Ward 5. Uh, most of the concerns I've heard from residents who aren't here, residents who are here spoke of. Um, one, uh, and Jeff Bott spoke a little bit to the Chestnut and Pine intersection, but um, one suggestion was to square off that intersection more because people tend to come down Chestnut, kind of, you know, uh, go through without without stopping or and you have to look very far to the left presently in order to see oncoming traffic um so I've received that suggestion another that wasn't mentioned is the intersection with south main street um and that there are some sight line obstructions uh i think with a fence perhaps um so if just that that could be looked into uh to make sure that meets the the zoning requirements for um, so that people are able to see uh, oncoming traffic on South Main Street. Um, otherwise, I think everyone addressed the, co the concerns that I've heard, um, but uh, just to reemphasize that, that traffic calming um, in general uh, be looked at on the street. And the, um, I've uh, told people to go to the, the new traffic calming form, um, and I hope that people have uh, filled that out so that uh, I'm not sure if that will be addressed today or will be addressed. I know usually um, there's a, sort of a traffic study done, uh, or at least it's not an official traffic study, but a, um, a look at the traffic counts perhaps before making a determination regarding traffic calming. Uh, so thank you everyone and um, feel free to be in touch any of my constituents as this moves forward. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so again, I will do what I can to address um, what I have heard today, um, it, just so uh, folks have some clarity about, uh, you know, how we got here and, and how we're going to move forward. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Do any members of the commission have any comments or questions? Mara. Um, okay, okay, Mara. Go ahead. So th this probably came up, but just crosswalks. We're right at the intersection of Pine and Chestnut. And there's not, hey, we go to Cooper's all the time. Uh, and there's not really a safe way to cross. Uh, there's a, if you go toward uh, South, Main. South Main, there's really a pretty unrecognizable uh, pedestrian crossing. And then if you go beyond Chestnut Street to the west, there's a lightly marked one there too. So there's not an easy way to cross the street. It's almost like a daredevil thing. Uh, some cars will stop, but mostly they're going too fast to, to notice you and to stop. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Any members of the commission? Uh, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Thank you, and I appreciated hearing all of the, the feedback from so many members of the public. And, and actually, I, I may well have comments or questions, but just using this comment to say I, I would really appreciate um, you know, sort of your perspective on on this design over some of the others, as well as um, uh, any potential for traffic coming there on Pine Street. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. 
Okay, so um, it, I think the easiest thing to do is I, I can respond to um, many of these uh, questions and comments. Um, and and um, so I, I'll start with saying, you know, anytime we have a complex intersection like this with a high crash rate, um, we always uh, find it to be in the best interest of the city to engage a, an outside engineering firm that specializes in traffic design. Um, and, and that's what we did here, Foss and O'Neill, um, our traffic engineers. Um, so, you know, I, I think what the city is looking for in this case is uh, uh, alternatives uh, for implementation. And what Foss and O'Neill did was gave us several recommendations, which we vet internally before rolling that out in, in a public forum such as this one. So when they say to us, you could put a roundabout here, what we then have to do internally is say, okay, well, what exactly does that look like? How much uh, space does that require? Um, what a lot of folks uh, in the city don't realize is that the city actually can own into their front yards more than they think. Um, just because the edge of the street is in a certain location or the curb line is in a certain location actually doesn't mean that the city's right of way doesn't extend further into your front yard. And in a lot of locations, the city's right of way actually it can extend much closer to your home than most people realize. So when we think about the space that a roundabout would take up, um, it, it would likely require encroachment into people's properties still within the public right of way, um, but encroachment into people's properties in a way that um, it might not be satisfactory to the residents who actually live at that intersection. Um, additionally, there are times, and this happens with many reconstruction projects, mass DOT projects, like on Damon Road, like I talked about, um, like kind of in an overview of what's going on construction-wise in the city, um, it is found that, that if something is to be constructed, there's actually not enough space and, and takings are necessary, eminent domain takings are necessary. So, it, you know, a roundabout is something that is, is sort of um, a, a, a significant undertaking. And, and again, it, it requires a lot of space to implement. Um, and it can definitely be outside of the actual physical constraints of the existing intersection in a way that might not be ideal um, for the actual abutters of, of the intersection. Um, so that was why while a, a roundabout would certainly work there from a, geo from a geometry point of view, um, it, it might not be the most desirable um, path forward. Um, it, similarly with Man Terrace, um, Fuss and O'Neill did uh, recommend taking Man Terrace and dead ending it and creating a cul-de-sac. Um, again, as we vetted this internally, um, and it, it was really under serious consideration, what we have to think about is the residence on Man Terrace, um, the traffic flow on Man Terrace, uh, we have to think about turning radiuses for things like oil trucks or moving vans or, or delivery vehicles and how much space is actually going to be required to turn around a large vehicle at the end of Man Terrace. Um, or are we actually going to end up, you know, having to back trucks out of Man Terrace and, and what is that going to look like and how disruptive is that going to be? And again, where are we going to have to encroach um, but within the limits of the layout or not within the limits of the layout. And um, for anyone who's ever driven a large vehicle, you know that uh, turning one around can, can definitely be challenging. So, you know, we did not want to create a scenario where in trying to solve one problem, we create a second problem. Um, I will add that, that when we transitioned away from the, uh, the, the dead end of Man Terrace to the current design that is on the screen in front of you. Um, I thoroughly vetted this with public safety, specifically the fire department, because they have a, a ladder truck and, and an engine that we have to make sure 
can make those corners. Um, they, we, we don't want to end up with a, in a scenario where we have a fire truck trapped somewhere or where we have, you know, engineered something that could potentially trap an emergency vehicle. Um, so these are uh, all things that, that kind of go into our decision making. And what we have ended up with here is a design that we feel stays within the current layout that is um, most advantageous to the most number of residents and, and, and really solves um, a, a, a problematic intersection um, to the extent possible. Um, so, so those are all of the things that, that we try to think of anytime we advance a, a design like this. And, and obviously there's pros and cons with everything. And I certainly heard the comments about the you know, four-way stops and, and folks maybe uh, uh, not understanding that concept. But again, we had this uh, thoroughly vetted by a, a traffic design professional firm. Um, and, and this was the solution that was advanced. Um, so that's just some commentary sort of on, on the overview of, of how we landed with this intersection configuration and how we made the decision um, around Man Terrace. Um, so a, a few other notes that I have here regarding um, some other comments that I heard. So advanced signage for the stop signs, that, that is part of the project and, and we will be certain um, that we also have um, uh, electro electronic message boards as part of this project to warn people of impending traffic pattern changes um, because we obviously have to retrain drivers who are accustomed to this intersection. So not only will we have those up temporarily, but we will also have advanced signage on all sides of the intersection so that drivers are aware of, of what's ahead. Um, the, I, I heard reference to a traffic study um, that was conducted some years ago. Um, I'm aware of this traffic study. It was actually conducted by PVPC. Um, I have the traffic study and this sort of ties into traffic calming on Pine Street because we actually have very robust data of speeds on Pine Street. It is several years old. It, at this time, but this was a, a pretty in-depth study that was completed. The speed limit on Pine Street is 30 miles an hour. Um, it was found that the uh, 85th percentile speeds, which is how we measure um, uh, common speeds, and meaning this is uh, what the majority of drivers are traveling. Um, we found them to be 30 miles an hour, 27 miles per hour, 32 miles an hour, and 32 miles an hour. And these, these were sort of, um, they were taken uh, eastbound, westbound, and on different sides of uh, Beacon Street. Um, so those are the 85th percentile speeds. Now this data was collected in 2014, um, and it was collected as a result of complaints of high traffic volume and, and speeding in the area. So um, again, this is from 2014, but this is the data that um, that was part of that study. So I, I would just mention it, um, it, that we do have the study and we do have this data from it. So um, when we look at those numbers, um, we do not see speeding as a major problem on this stretch of roadway, at least based on the data from several years ago. Now with the new traffic calming request that we have received, um, we would go through a, a process to collect new speed data and see if those numbers have somehow changed uh, over the past several years. Um, but that is the data that we are working with at this time. So I do want to mention that, that this study is very much alive and well, and, and we are aware of what's contained in it. Um, the next thing I'll mention is that there was a question about uh, the width of the sidewalks. They'll all be ADA compliant, and that means five feet wide. So everywhere we're touching a sidewalk, it's going to be five feet wide. Um, the overall width of the road in terms of complete streets, this gets a little bit more complicated. Um, the road is narrow. It's 24 feet wide east of Chestnut Street and about 30 feet wide west of Chestnut Street. So typical travel lane is 11 feet in either direction and a parking, a parked car takes eight feet. 
Um, so when we think about, um, you know, bike lanes or, or kind of, um, it, you know, creating more space in the street for something other than driving, we don't have a lot to work with here in terms of space. Um, we barely have enough space for two cars passing and a car parked. Um, and, and that's actually why one of the ordinances that's before this commission today is actually on the agenda um, because we do not have enough space um, to, to have parked cars on, on both sides of Pine Street um, and, and have two-way traffic. Um, so that's just kind of dimensionally what we're working here, um, what we're working with here. Um, the other thing that I heard was uh, questions about the intersections of Chestnut and Pine, uh, meaning that the intersection is very wide. So this is something that we have looked at um, because um, it, obviously a, a very wide mouth intersection is not necessarily ideal, but one of the things that we have to think about in terms of reconstruction is that if we were to shrink the mouth of that intersection and square that off, uh, we have significant drainage at the mouth of those intersections. Uh, Beacon Street as well is another very wide, Beacon and Pine is, a very, is another very wide intersection. So we have significant drainage that would require relocation. We also have utility poles that would require relocation. So when we think about a project like this, um, we're looking at a project that's costing in excess of a half a million dollars here. Um, and so we want to uh, create the biggest benefit possible, um, but in looking at potentially shrinking the mouth of that intersection, um, we would be adding a significant drainage component to this uh, project that, that is actually um, not necessary. And by saying not necessary, but what I mean by not necessary is um, there's nothing wrong with that drainage system. So it would be one thing if I said, well, you know, the strain system is very old or it's problematic or, you know, it needs to be relocated anyway, but that's actually not the case. So what we would be doing is, is taking on a, a fairly excessive expense here um, to, to relocate utilities that don't otherwise need relocating, um, not to mention the overhead utility infrastructure. Um, electric utility infrastructure not under our jurisdiction that, that we would have to pay to relocate. Um, and I should also mention we have water and sewer um, that, that would need to be uh, dealt with as well. So those are the considerations that, that we are, are working with in terms of those intersections. Um, as far as your comments about uh, traffic coming on, on Pine Street, I, I certainly hear everybody's comments about speeding. Um, I, I do want to uh, say that, you know, this is something that we will look at as we continue to go through the process of, of design and ultimately bidding this project. Um, and, and I want to respond to as much as I possibly can today. Um, but, um, you know, these, these are uh, complaints that, um, you know, are are not necessarily part of the ordinances that are before this commission today and that may be dealt with by this commission at a later date, though I, I will grant that, that it would be far more efficient to deal with them as part of this project. So um, that's kind of my response to everything I heard. Um, and, and I'm certainly happy to uh, hear any more questions or comments from the commission, if there are any of the counselors. Um, hopefully I've uh, satisfied your comments. Councilor Nash, go ahead. See. Okay, I'm unmuted. Cool. Um, two things. Thank you. Thank you for that very detailed um, overview, uh, Director Lascalia. Um, uh, two two questions related to this. Um, the um, some uh, line striping, how that might be used within this project, like with a center line, uh, with uh, lines on. Uh, the outside of the travel lanes to help narrow them, because you mentioned the street has different widths at points. And then the last thing, uh, the other thing has to do with crosswalks. Um, uh, I think one was mentioned near uh, Chestnut. And, um, and so they're going to be ADA compliant, and so we're going to have curb cuts and all of that. But if there's additional crosswalks planned along uh, Pine Street. 
Yes, I'm sorry. And I did not respond to that, the, the, the comment um, from the folks who mentioned that they walked to Cooper. So yes, um, we will be cleaning up the crosswalks along Pine Street. Um, and we will be, um, we will be rectifying that it, it's kind of a strange diagonal crosswalk now and, and that will be resolved and squared off. Um, so it will be far safer um, than, than what's currently there. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that yes, line striping is certainly a, a possibility to delineate um, a, a a narrower travel lane to sort of visually narrow the road so that that folks um, slow down and and that would just be an, an operations piece of of the contract as we write it um, and and I did forget one more thing there was a question about the intersection remaining open during construction um, and and to that I would say that's a coordination between the city and the contractor we generally try to avoid um, detours and closing intersections and closing roads. Um, when we do construction projects, you know, occasionally it's necessary for very short periods of time, but that's something that we work out with the contractor um, once we get through bidding and contract award. Okay, Councillor, hopefully I um, answered Yes, that was great. Thank you. Questions, okay. Okay, any other members of the commission have any comments or the counselors have any comments just before I go back to members of the public here. Um, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Uh, just real quick to say that this is um, nice to see these, these changes and I, um, your explanation uh, really helped. I really appreciated that, um, you know, background explanation of, of what intersection was gonna take up space that the city already had and, and as I was looking at design, that sort of made sense to me that it was, um, you know, I think the rerouting of, of Man Terrace, um, you know, I, I can see that and how um, using using what's there rather than creating a roundabout or a cul-de-sac or something would um, really help to, to make that work well. And, you know, this is, I bike down Pine Street almost daily when the weather's nice. And, um, you know, this is an intersection I know well and usually sort of grit my teeth and, and you know, check as I go through. And so, um, you know, it's, it, it's nice to see these improvements being planned in the crosswalks and, um, you know, and, uh, it's just, thank you for taking this on. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Deb, and I see your hand raised, go ahead. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually just a very quick comment. It was not mentioned that you've done a very interesting and creative way to get from the intersection onto Man Terrace. And I just wanted to, to say, I, I applaud that. It's a nice solution. Yeah, thank you, Deb. And I'll also add that um, it, it's going to create a, 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 albeit a very small one, but a, a nice uh, a green space there. So thank you for uh, bringing that up. I see a bench in our future. Maybe. Okay. Councillor Jarrett, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for all those, the explanation. Um, I just kind of had a comment. I noted that, you know, in the past, Councillor Nash uh, has thought and worked on the idea of going with a 25 mile an hour speed limit by default uh, around the city. And the, the concern is that, that basically people would ignore it because the streets are not built for that. Um, they're, you know, they're kind of built to be, to be for 30 miles an hour or wider. Um, but now we're seeing that you know we're percentile is 30 miles an hour. We're building for 30 miles an hour. And if we lower that speed limit 25, then we would you know consider that to be speeding and would probably be more eligible for traffic like um, so that's just a note uh, about that. And I would also note that um so according to some statistics from research I did, you're 70% more likely to be killed by a car traveling. 30 miles an hour than 25. Um, so there's some, some significant uh, safety consideration there. Um, another uh, question was, you know, on, on Federal, South Main, Nonatuck, Elm Street, that intersection, uh, you put in some poles um, rather than changing the curb uh, to, 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 uh, to try to shrink the size of those intersections. 
um, and wonder if something like that would be appropriate uh, so you don't have to change the drainage and do all the expensive stuff, but uh, for less cost could put in, uh, could square off uh, some of those rounder intersections wherever they may occur. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Um, I, I, I'm not sure, it, it may have been my inter internet connection that was a little unstable there for a few moments, but I thought I heard you comment about the uh, 25 mile an hour inter, uh, speed limit versus a 30 mile an hour speed limit. Um, the issue with Pine Street is that it is posted at 30 miles an hour, meaning that there has actually been a formal speed study that was done at some point and submitted to MassDOT for approval that actually mandates that street be 30 miles an hour. Um, so in order to change that posted speed limit, a new study would need to be commissioned um, that would look at existing conditions and then um, may or may not make a recommendation of a lower speed limit. Um, so I certainly hear your comment about constructing the road for um, 25 miles an hour versus 30 miles an hour. And, and part of that has to do with um, the, you know, how narrow the road is certainly. Um, and, um, it, you know, what, what we're able to do with the traveled way, but, but we don't have an awful lot of real estate to work with here. Um, and, and we certainly are constrained by what the posted speed limit is at this time, which is 30 miles an hour. So um, I just wanted to acknowledge that comment. So thank you. Um, okay, I see some hands from the public. So Anne, I see your hand up. Go ahead. We're gonna ask you to unmute here. So you just have to unmute yourself. There we go. Yep. Um, I, I wanted to uh, mention that traffic study in 2014 which again is seven years ago. I, I think that's the one that, that in the neighborhood, if other people can uh, back me up on this, when we had that done, I think that's the one, we were all pretty unhappy because it ended up being done over a holiday weekend, but which wasn't reflective of, um, you know, commuter traffic. commuter traffic and day to day. Anyway, so it'd be interesting to find out what the date of that was. And, look back and see if in fact that was the case, but that was a big topic of conversation when it was done um, at the time. Um, so also I was wondering whether at the intersection here of Chestnut and Pine, whether uh, if a small island was put in, I'm not talking about a roundabout, but just, you know, like a small island that would delineate the, you know, the mm -hmm. two lanes of it also, um, just a, a comment, you know, if can that be looked at, would that be possible? And also right now, given what is in place for construction, how long uh, of a period of time do you think this construction will take? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we can certainly, you know, uh, several of the department's engineers are, are on this meeting and, and listening to comments um, the, because it's important to us that we get input from folks. So we'll certainly look at the feasibility of these suggestions and, and de determine if it's possible. Um, in terms of construction, um, you know, I, I would anticipate construction would be complete by the end of this year, this calendar year. Um, by the time we bid this project and mobilize the contractor, um, we could be looking at several months um, and then we make a schedule. So it's difficult for me to say, um, well, you know, this is going to take three weeks or it's going to take four weeks. What, what I commit to from public works is that we will communicate to you throughout the duration of the project. We have one of our engineers on site every day um, and we try to work with the neighborhood to make this as non-disruptive as possible. Um, so, so that will be the commitment to you, but I, I'm sorry that I can't uh, uh, answer the, the exact question about schedule. Um, next, uh, Elena. Uh, 
Great, thank you. Um, one question I had was about the man terrace and how it intersects with Pine Street and Maple. And I'm just curious what the rationale was behind the one way and then no left turn. I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm just curious um, to hear your thoughts on that. Um, and then I just wanted to push a little bit DPW on kind of the space limitations. Um, I have lived in Boston for close to 15 years and was pretty involved in a lot of infrastructure projects in and around Boston for a few years. And space is obviously a, a major constraint. And I know, um, you know, the travel lanes are narrow and, you know, the speeds, are, the speed limit is set in stone based on this, this traffic study that occurred. But I want to push DPW a little bit harder on um, the trade-offs that happen between um, you know, parking and travel lanes and slowing this traffic because there are a number of cyclists and pedestrians and many people on this call who have just expressed concern around the speeds of the, the car travel through Pine Street in particular. And so, um, you know, having so many engineers on the call this, this afternoon, just pushing a little bit harder around thinking creatively and ways in which we can calm the traffic um, and create space for not just cars, and that includes parked cars and, and also um, traveling cars. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I'm gonna take uh, Bob's question and then we'll uh, kind of go back around and, and I'll offer some comments. So Bob, go ahead. I just wanna make a comment about the reduction of on-street parking because I know what that's, I think I know what that's gonna do, which is, speed people up even more, they're gonna have more of a straightaway. And the parking on the street has been the main thing slowing people down over the last 20 years. Uh, a lot more residents were doing that. And as Ann mentioned, I think, uh, you know, there was conversation even with city officials, well, that was a way to go to uh, slow traffic down. So taking that out without doing other calming is gonna make things worse. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, thank you for your comment. Um, I see Mara's actual hand is up here. So we'll unmute you in a moment. Go ahead. I just, I just had a quick question. So what happens after you get all these comments together and talk with your colleagues and sort of what's the next step? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so I, I, what I would like to say is I, I have to um, kind of be careful with what the agenda is and then what the role of this commission is. So what this commission is, um, is doing is providing a public forum for comments, um, which we always like to hear and then potentially incorporate a, as possible into our design. So that's why um, it, we have public works engineers on this call this afternoon and, and the, the folks on, on this commission, the counselors who we work with at public works um, to, to make the community better when we do projects like this. So, so that's kind of the first piece. And then there's the things that we are actually voting on that go to city council. So the, there are some components of a, a public works road reconstruction project that must have action taken on it by city council, meaning we can't just put a stop sign somewhere. We can't just make a road one way. We can't just make a right turn only. A city council actually has to approve that. Um, there's a process for it and it starts with this commission. Um, but what city council does, does not do is, is uh, vote on the specifics of a public works project that might have to do with reconfiguring an intersection or something like that. So um, to answer your question, you know, we take all comments under advisement and, and we will make sure that, it, that it, if and when there are other safety improvements to be proposed for Pine Street that we will engage the community just like we have here. 
Um, so, so that's sort of the, commi it's the commitment that this commission makes and, and that public works makes. Um, and then in terms of what actions we are actually going to take today, we have to vote on a package of ordinances that are in front of us. So I hope that answers that question. Um, I will go back to um, the question about Man Terrace and, and how we came up with the um, uh, configuration of, of Man Terrace on the, the proposed configuration of Man Terrace onto Pine Street. And the answer to that is we have an existing layout that, that we need to work within. Um, so, so we actually have limits of the roadway. So what we needed to do is work with Fuss and O'Neill to pull the exit of Man Terrace far enough away from that four-way intersection to avoid confusion and then limit traffic flow to one direction so as not to add traffic flow to an already confusing intersection that obviously has a very high crash rate. Um, so, so it, you know, the reason it landed where it landed is because we have to stay within the existing road layout and then we want to route traffic away from that intersection. So that's how we landed with the configuration that it is. It, you know, if, if we were allowing cars to turn left, there's just not enough space there to avoid people potentially being in another lane or, you know, conflicts with oncoming cars that might be turning off of Maple or some other undesirable turning movement. Um, so uh, that's, you know, we came up with the best um, outcome that, that we could given our space constraints. So um, Dennis, I see your hand up. Yeah, uh, thank you Director Muscalia for all of your responses to the comments so far. One that I did not hear was a response to the, the thought of putting large stop signs on both sides of Pine Street, both on the left and right, as opposed to a four-way stop sign. It seems to me that if it works and cars no longer run the stop signs, then we've solved the problem there. We don't need to have a four-way stop sign. Yep, thank you. Um, so uh, again, the engagement of Fuss and O'Neill as the traffic professionals, if you will, um, it, it is such that they reviewed a variety of alternatives. Um, and in this case, given, including the accident data that was provided by the chief and described by the chief. Um, and it was their professional opinion that the uh, series of alternatives they gave us were, were the preferred alternatives and that, um, you know, what you are describing was not. And, and, you know, that's sort of just to kind of finish my thought, that's actually why we hire the professional engineers um, it, and, and then defer to their opinion. I see Councillor Jarrett's hand up. Go ahead, Councillor Jarrett. Um, another question I heard but didn't hear an answer was, uh, vehicles traveling north on Maple Street in icy or snowy weather uh, and the concern they'll have to stop and then may not be able to start again, if you could address that. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're very mindful, even in our current plowing operations, that that, that is a hill. Um, and it, what I can say about it is that our, our snow, you know, our ice, snow and ice control operations actually have it is part of our standard operating procedures, what we call hill routes um, that are treated and attended to first. Um, and we have um, a, a variety of, of places in the city um, that are problem areas for us. Um, this is already one of them. Um, you know, with the addition of a stop sign here, I, I absolutely acknowledge that in bad conditions, um, it, you know, the hill um, it, it is going to be snowy. Um, and what I can say is it's something that, it, that is part of our standard operating procedures we address, but, it, but I certainly hear the concern. Okay, Lena, I see your hand up. I had a follow-up question on Man Terrace and kind of 
your explanation of how the rationale um, behind kind of the layout there is really helpful. But one question I had was, is this rendering that's up on the screen right now, is that shifting Manteras's exit onto Pine Street slightly to the right? Um, and then another question is, is for some reason I have a hard time conceptualizing it, but I'm wondering if it would simplify things if the one way was facing the opposite direction and you could only enter Man Terrace from Pine Street instead of exiting it. So it doesn't um, cause more congestion in that particular area. Um, but I'm, I'm not an engineer and so I don't know. I'm just, that's just the question around the one way and which direction it should be facing. Yeah, what I can say is it's, it's difficult looking at the conceptual plan to know specifically where the actual um, current entrance is relative to this one. Um, it, that's more of a, a, an engineering detail that I could provide for you via email um, it, after this meeting. Um, the, the existing road layout, which is sort of memorialized, um, you know, by recorded record, um, it, you know, is, is a certain defined footage wide, um, and we are staying within that footprint. So um, what I would say is it's likely we're, we're outside of the existing footprint, but the particulars of that, I, I would have to get to you um, it, after the meeting. Um, your question about traffic flow is certainly duly noted. What I can tell you is this has been thoroughly vetted um, both internally and uh, by our external traffic engineers. And this was determined to be the best configuration. Um, and, you know, we certainly looked at it from all directions. We, again, looked at it with, with a cul-de-sac, but th this is where we landed. So uh, your, your question or comment is, is duly noted that this is ultimately the, the design that we chose to advance. Okay, anybody else have any further comments, questions? Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to speak to uh, the folks on the street that are uh, that the, that they have witnessed speeding on the street, and we have no doubt. I can speak, you know, as as one of the commissioners, no doubt that people do speed from time to time on the street. It's just that the traffic studies indicate that most of the vehicles are traveling around the proper rate of speed. Um, and we've seen this in traffic studies across, you know, in, on different streets across the city that we have no doubt that somebody has blown through at 40 miles an hour at some point, but the, but the, the traffic data suggests that most of the, the cars are, are following the general regulations. And that, um, so uh, we believe you and we also are looking at the data, which we, which goes, the city uses to make these evaluations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Nash. Um, it, so I, what I will say, seeing no further comments um, or, or questions here. Um, it, so what I will say is that it, we certainly hear the concerns of the neighborhood around speeding on Pine Street and um, it, as well as um, the, the, uh, the intersections, which are sort of um, wider th than typical, um, it, as well as the concept of more shared space along the street. And, and again, we have uh, representatives from the engineering department on this call, and um, we will carefully look at this street and determine what, if any, improvements we can implement as part of this project. Um, and I, I will commit to follow up with Councillor Jarrett on this and, and again, communication with the neighborhood um, about what, if anything, um, we're gonna be able to do as part of this project. So that's um, how, I, how I will be able to uh, leave this agenda item um, unless anyone has any further comment. Okay. Seeing and hearing none, thank you to, to everyone for your comments. They are, again, all duly noted. Um, so with that, we now move into the section of the agenda 
um, where we need to go through um, multiple ordinances that that are necessary for the um, for the implementation of these proposed improvements. Um, so the first is the proposed ordinances for stop sign uh, proposed ordinance for stop signs on Pine Street, Maple Street, and Man Terrace. So this will uh, what this ordinance will do is. Um, will create uh, the four-way stop that we've been talking about. So may I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? Move to approve. Evan seconds. Okay, thank you. And now I will read this. Um, Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Department of Public Works, an ordinance relative to stop signs on Maple Street, Man Terrace, and Pine Street, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembles as follows, section one, section 312-113 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows, section 312-113, schedule 12, stop and yield intersections. A, isolated stop signs. Stop intersections are established at the following locations. We will be deleting the following. Location, Pine Street, direction of travel east at the intersection of Maple Street. Location, Pine Street, direction of travel west at the intersection of Maple Street. And we will be adding Man Terrace, direction of travel north at the intersection of Pine Street. D, multi-way stop signs. Multi-way stop intersections are being established at the following locations. We will be adding name of street, Pine Street, direction of travel east slash west, intersection Maple Street. Name of street, Maple Street, direction of travel north slash south, intersection Pine Street. Is there any discussion on this proposed ordinance? Okay, I do not see any hands and I do not hear any discussion. So with that, Beth, roll call, please. Sorry, I was having trouble unmuting. Uh, Donna. Yes. Jody. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Devin. Yes. Wayne. I thought I saw Wayne come in at some point. He was here. He's gone. Oh, okay. Um, Nancy. Nancy Forrestal. I think we lost audio on her somehow. Okay. Um, Karen. Yes. Here, uh, Jim. Yes. Did we want to wait for Nancy or? Uh, yes, yeah, Cindy, is that um, Nancy's cell phone? I said yes. I don't know if you heard me or not. Oh, we got you now. Oh, no. Now we have you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My connection goes in. And okay. Thank you. So that passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next we have proposed ordinance for one-way street on a section of Man Terrace upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Department of Public Works, an ordinance relative to a one-way street on Man Terrace, an ordinance of the city council uh, I'm sorry, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section one, at section 312-112 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-112, schedule 11, one-way streets, location, Man Terrace, direction, northwesterly, from a point 60 feet southeasterly of Pine Street to Pine Street. Uh, may I have a motion for a positive Recommendation, please. As read, I have Devin Moose, we approve the motion. Jody, I'll second. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Beth? Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? 
Yes. Eben? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Karen? Yes. And Jim? Yes. Passes unanimously. Okay, next is a proposed ordinance for a turn restriction on Man Terrace at Pine Street upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Department of Public Works, an ordinance relative to turning restriction on Man Terrace, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council assembled as follows. Section one, at section 312-115 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-115, Schedule 14, left turns prohibited, name of street, Man Terrace, direction of travel north, left turn prohibited onto Pine Street. And I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please. Jody, motion for a positive recommendation. Second, second, this is Karen. Thank you, Councillor. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, roll call, please. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Nancy? Nancy, we can't hear you. Karen? Yes. Jim? Yes. Uh, I think we may have Nancy back. Do you have a vote, Nancy? Yeah. Could you hear me now? Yes, thank you. That okay, also passes sorry. Unanimously. unanimously. Okay, thank you. Next is a proposed ordinance for Pine Street, no parking zone. Upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz and the Department of Public Works. Cindy, can you mute that, please? Upon the recommendation of Mayor D David J. Narkowitz and the Department of Public Works, an ordinance relative to parking on Pine Street, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council Assembled, as follows, section one, that section 312-102 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-102, schedule one, parking prohibited all times. Location, Pine Street, added 815-1985, side northwesterly from Chestnut Street to South Main Street. And I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please. Kevin moves to approve as read. Jody seconds. Okay. Um, and I will add just for the purposes of discussion that uh, my office has received uh, uh, multiple comments from residents on this section of the street um, that uh, it, it's obviously quite narrow through here, um, 24 feet wide, actually, to be exact. Um, with 11 foot travel lanes and eight foot necessary for parking, um, even parking on one side of the road um, is actually acting as traffic calming um, and, and is actually creating courtesy one-way traffic um, throughout this entire stretch um, for the purposes of discussion. Are there any further comments on this ordinance as proposed? Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, thank you for putting the map up and that um, the, the thing that it, you know, that I'm generally familiar with about the street is that where the, the parking is being allowed is mostly the residential side. There are some residences, so on the, the southern side tends to be residential. The northern side uh, in, in this portion has a, several businesses. There, there are a, a few residential properties but I, I think that it, it, it is in keeping with the request of, uh, of neighbors here to have some on-street parking. It would be in front of their home. It would you know, be part of the, allow for some traffic calming. And um, so parking is not going away. I, I, I think this is a, an acceptable um, uh, pattern here. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Councillor. Okay, I'll also add that it, you know, this has definitely been a topic of conversation in the past to the extent that there was um, a, a already an ordinance in place for, for a portion here um, that, that we are now adding to. Is there any further discussion on the proposed ordinance? Okay, seeing and hearing none, roll call please, Beth. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Nancy? Nancy? Uh, Karen? Yes. And Jim? Yes. I think we've completely lost Nancy this time. <laughs> oh, there she is, Nancy, can you hear us? All right, I'm back, yes. Thank you, motion Thank passes you. unanimously. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, next is the 2020 annual traffic safety report by Chief Casper. Chief, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, city, I'm just bringing it over here, sorry. Um, city council or city ordinance dictates that I present to the Transportation and Parking Commission um, an annual traffic safety report. So you have it in front of, in front of you. Uh, I think the most notable is that 2020 was a unique year for all of us. And certainly that impacted our operations here at the police department, as far as citations, traffic accidents. If you notice on citations, you'll see that number drop dramatically from 2019 to 2020, when we went from about 3000 to about 1700. That's a significant drop, but our officers were specifically directed to refrain from um, minor traffic violations, especially during the onset of the pandemic, when I think a lot of, we didn't know as much about the virus and how we could do things safely. So we really pulled back. And in addition, the world kind of shut down. Everyone was remote working. There was a lot less drivers on the road. Certainly all uh, restaurants closed, bars closed, all those different things impacted the numbers that you're seeing here. Definitely the impacts on operating under the influence of alcohol or drugs. You'll note that in 2020, we charged 61 people with that. And you can compare that to the year before where we had about 111. Again, our, our establishments are closed. So that has a direct impact on these numbers. Um, notably, I thought it was notable that in 2020, 9.8% of the drivers were charged with OUI drugs. And that is up from 5.4%. Although those are still the, the whole numbers are still small, but it's certainly something we're keeping track of as we understand the impact of um, having more uh, marijuana legalization and adult use marijuana, we're kind of curious to see what's gonna happen with those numbers over time. So I always include that in this report. Uh, and also you can see in collisions, uh, collision numbers dropped dramatically from 2019 to 2020. We went from 596 in 2019 to 366 in 2020. So again, just a result of that reduction in cars on the road. Um, you can see that some of our grant work was impacted, although we had applied for grants and were prepared to do what we always do with them, which is we engage in these different waves of enforcement, uh, often having to do with uh, OUI impaired operation or the hands-free law. Uh, we had to pull back from that as well. And you can see that because of COVID, there was a number of waves in that grant that we did not uh, do. Uh, and we have new grants that we're working under now, uh, uh, specifically directed at these different topics that you can see, uh, impaired driving, distracted driving. Um, and then finally, still we have the child passenger safety grant. Also, you can see the number of car seats installed in 2020, dramatic drop from 2019. That was also COVID related. Um, and in general, all the way down to the bottom of the report, you can see recommendations that we continue to apply for those same safety grants that we typically apply for each year, the passenger safety grant that allows us to get car seats, the bicycle safety grant where we're able to get equipment and do some education, as well as a heavy focus on OUI enforcement. I think our department is one of the best departments in enforcing OUI. Our officers have won many awards for their work in this area. And as a result, we do not have as many OUI related accidents in the wee hours of the morning. 
Uh, that's a, a quick overview of the 2020 traffic report. Thank you, Chief. Thank Appreciate you. that report. Councillor Nash, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Chief. It, you know, we've we've been following this since uh, the the advent of a, of adult use here in Northampton. You mentioned the OUIs in um, that weren't uh, alcohol related, that were uh, probably drug related. Do we know that how many of those were actually related to marijuana, or they're they haven't been parsed out that way. That's a fair question. And I wish I had the answer for you. It actually has been parsed out. And if you go to the open data portal on our website, you can review in every single incident and you can see what the drug was in the OUI. So you would be able to look that up. I just don't happen to have it right in front of me. I'll have it for you next year. My apologies. Well, no, I, I will go there. You've introduced me to the open portal and I've been there several times and I'll, I'll be going back to look that up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Councillor Foster, go ahead. Thank you, Chief. Um, I guess one, I, I was just thinking about that because I know that you were saying with COVID you directed officers not to pull over for more minor traffic infractions. And so just a thinking I have as well as if, um, if they were only pulling people over for more major infractions, if that might change the percentage of impaired operation just as causing the level of, of operation that might get them pulled over. So I don't know that you even need to respond. I'm just thinking about that. Um, and then another question I had around the bicycle safety grant is I know that there's, there's work with that are uh, funds allocated to teach safe riding skills to kids. Um, but I also know that a major barrier for many adults with cycling is, not understanding or not feeling safe and confident and knowing the rules of the road for biking. And I didn't know if there was any flexibility with that kind of grant um, to teach um, cycling skills to adults, um, you know, that how to ride in traffic and how to ride on city streets. Yeah, that's a great question. That particular grant, I believe we write into it education for children, for new riders. And also when they attend that, they get a helmet typically. Um, we do have a separate grant where we do, it, it really targets usually more enforcement for adult riders that we see doing something that's inconsistent with the laws. Uh, but often that really turns into just education. We're not writing a lot of, of bicycle um, citations. So usually it's more of an education, but that's good to keep in mind. I guess if we had riders who wanted to learn about that, if there was an interest, we'd certainly be willing to help educate uh, riders on that. So I'll kick that around. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, any other comments for the chief from members of the commission? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Um, I will now move on to new business. Does anybody have any new business? Okay, one final comment before we adjourn. Um, for those um, who still may be on the call from the Pine Street neighborhood, um, if, if there is a follow-up required by me or if you have further questions, please contact us at dpwinfo at northamptonma.gov. Um, so I still see Elena on here, so this would apply um, to any further questions you may have or, or about the configuration of uh, Man Terrace or any other comments you may have on, on the project, um, as well as for any other constituents of, of Councillor Jarrett or Councillor Maiori. So I just wanted to add that in before we adjourn. Okay, um, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? This is Jamie, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Beth, roll call, please. Donna? Yes. Jody? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Devin? Yes. Nancy? Nancy's gone again. Um, Karen? Yes. And Jim. Yes. Are you back, Nancy? No. <laughs> it's kind of like a seance. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. I, I think we have quorum to adjourn. Um, so thank you all. We'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye.